Uh, excited to get back on the field this week. Uh, it's been, uh, I think, a very, very productive bye week. Uh, very pleased with how our, our team, our staff, um, just really the program as a whole uh, attacked the bye week. We set out a plan Monday for uh, things that we wanted to accomplish throughout the week. Thought the staff did a great job putting together the plan and then the players really responded. We had several great practices and then had a chance to, to get our guys out of town here this weekend, uh, get coaches on the road recruiting, and then most importantly, get our players away from it. You know, we've been going at it here pretty good for you know, for a while. And so I think, you know, the guys had a chance to get home, get away, re refresh, recharge, and get ready for this stretch run. So it's good to see them back in town last night. They were excited to be back, you know, energized, focused, uh, uh, know the challenge that we have upcoming here with, uh, with going down to Fort Worth to play TCU, a very good football team. Um, we, we all know the history of that game here over the last few years. They've all been, you know, they've all been, you know, pretty tight games, very competitive games. You know, Gary's obviously, you know, one of the top coaches in the country, um, of extremely, extremely talented team. Skill position wise, I don't know that we've faced a team that has the, the quality of skill players that this group does. Uh, you, you talk about one of the most dynamic return guys in the country and in, in Cavante Turpin. I wish he'd hurry up and graduate. Um, he's uh, he, he's pretty special, fun to watch. Um, uh, and then obviously the receivers, the backs, I mean, they're just loaded with, with, with very, very good skill talent. The biggest thing you see with them is, is team speed. I mean, it's always been good. TCU teams have always been fast, and this group is certainly no different. So playing very well defensively, as, as they always do. They always tend to find themselves you know, at the top of the you know, Big 12 and national rankings. This year is no different. They're playing extremely well. Two of the best defensive ends that we'll see all year uh, will be on the field Saturday. Um, so, you know, I, our, our team knows the challenge. They, they know what kind of program TCU is. Again, they have a lot of respect for them, the kind of games that we've had with them, how difficult it is to go win in Fort Worth. Um, but our focus, honestly, right now, you know, especially through the bye week, has, has not been as much TCU. It's been more about us. Uh, finding ways that, that we can get better. Um, and again, I, I, I feel great about the way our guys prepared throughout the bye week, and I know they're very excited to uh, get down to Fort Worth and play this one. I'm not sure what we'll do with uh, Al, Al here today, but um, John had a question about that. Yeah, Lincoln, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, you know, you get a couple days off, you have the open day, a weekend off, uh, and then you have a new voice as a defensive coordinator. Do you see a new energy? I know you talked about kind of revitalized, but is there a new energy or guys' new focus, or how would you say they're approaching the back half of the season? Yeah, they had a, they had a good, a good mentality all week. Um, you know, where does that stem from? Probably a little bit of all of it. Um, I think for us, it's just about, you know, kind of chasing and fighting to get to, to a point where we can play the way that we know we're capable of and, and doing it more consistently. And so um, I think everybody's got that sense of urgency. Does, does the new voice help? Probably some um, is part of it. Just having not played to the level that we want to play defensively um, and the challenge of, of you know putting in the work to get to that point um, i think there's there's some inner challenges happening too um, and 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 there better be so i thought we responded great i i thought the staff you know came together with a little bit different obviously different setup now um, and you know really organized really working well together and uh, our players had a good week of practice so you know it's it's just a start you know it's going to be a it's going to be a process, obviously a big, big, um, you know, a, a very important part of it here, this first game against TCU to, to gain some momentum there. Uh, but I think our players have had a good mindset and they've rallied behind the staff and, and behind our leaders. Jason Kersey. Uh, Lincoln, last week <coughs> Mike Stoop said that, that he had trouble sometimes connecting with the players in, in terms of his approach to coaching. Does coaching today's players require a different maybe more delicate approach than, than in the past? Oh, man, it's such a broad question. I mean, there's probably times for both. You know, I, I, I think delicate's not always the answer, I don't think, for, for anybody. But, but certainly being able to connect and have relationships with them is part of it. And, and part of it, you know, let's be real too. Part of it comes down to just success on the field and the confidence that that, that breeds uh, players being able to, 
uh, you know, really understand what you're talking about, really, and also being able to see if I do this, here's the results that, that follow with that. So I think as coaches, we all kind of face our own challenges that way. I mean, it is, you know, players are different now. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, we all kind of have the inner battle of, you know, maybe what we were taught when we were players, um, how we went through it versus how it is now and how much do you, how much do you adapt? How much do you stay true to kind of your core values and the things that you believe in? I mean, it's, I, 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 would, I would guess that every coach out there, if they're being truly honest with you, you know, fights that some. I, I do. I, I know. I know Mike said it publicly that he did, which I thought was very open and honest. I, I do too. I, I think, I think every coach does a little bit this day and age. James Hale. You know, Lincoln, this is obviously an incredibly tough decision for you. When you made that decision, as you thought through it, you know, where do you feel like you can get this defense to? I mean, how much better do you feel like it can play? I think we can play a lot better. I, I do. I, and again, I think we've seen, you know, in the last several years, we've seen bits and pieces. We've seen flashes. We've had some just outstanding individual games. I, I want us to get to the level where we, you know, where we can play like that more consistently. And uh, so, yeah, no, like we said last week, you know, it was a, it was a tough decision, but it's uh, it's it's done. It's it's passed. Um, you know, our players have moved on. We've moved on, and uh, excited about this week. All right, Gary Marta. You mentioned last week it's it's sometimes a very small difference between success and, and failure, even on the offensive side. Defensively, you guys haven't given up the big play maybe like you did a year ago, but you just had trouble getting off the field. How much is it just mental and, and a confidence thing like you mentioned, you the, think? There's there's definitely some of that. You know, once you once you start you know, getting some of those stops and getting some momentum, you play better. The other team presses. I mean, it, it's it's it. How you open the question is kind of is very true. It is so. It is such a fine line, and and there's so many things that we have done well. It's. I mean, I like I said this morning on the teleconference. It's not like the sky's falling. I mean, we're. You know, we're we're not far off. We weren't far off with with Mike running it. I don't think we're far off with the changes we made now. But we're all fighting to just kind of get over that hump right now. And, and so uh, we we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, it's very clear to the, all of us within those walls, and very clear that you know if we can just you know make us strides in a few key areas that that we can be a very good defense and be a championship defense like we've been the last several years. So. Uh, um, you know, that's that's what we're fighting for right now. Ryan Abert. Lincoln, Kyler hasn't lost much as a starting <laughs> quarterback going a long way back. What have you seen, though, and he talked about how quiet he was after the game, the way he reacted personally. What have you seen about the way he's handled it from a leadership perspective uh, over the last week? So he, he took it really hard. He did, but most of the really good ones I've been around do and uh, so yeah he hasn't experienced that a whole lot in his life but that's you know you, you, at the end of the day even even a guy like him you're not going to win them all and so I, I I think he's had a good approach I think for him it was like all of our team there's you know you got to get past that one and and that took a day or two but I think there was kind of a renewed focus um, I think I think he's excited about some of the things that that he's done and that we're doing offensively. And then I think also, you know, for us it was a chance to kind of step back and look at the first half of the season and and not just gauge from the from the previous game, but look back at the first six games and what have we done well, uh, what do we need to get better at. And I think we're all excited about you know his progress and the fact that even though he's done a lot of good things, there's so many things that he can improve on that are within his control that we feel like we made some strides on last week and feel like we'll be better uh, here in the second half than we were in the first half. Okay, next was Tyler Palmatier. Do you remember, with Bob Diaco on the field now, what have practices been like and are you getting the sense that he was really anxious to get back on the field and really engaging the players? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I mean, he's a, he's a very eager guy, you know, he's, it's almost he's almost like he's been chained up a little bit you know it's uh he's he's been great in the office with the roles that he's been allowed to do by NCAA rules and he's you know always wanted more and and trying to find ways to you know no matter how 
big or small the job was, trying to find ways just to help us. And, and he's been very helpful. So I, I know he didn't want it to happen, obviously, in this manner, but I, he, he's certainly excited to be out there. He's very energetic, uh, brings a lot of just really good vibes to the, to the practice, and then obviously extremely knowledgeable, too. So he's, uh, yeah, he's been a big part of, you know, and obviously roughing in his role and, and the rest of our defensive coaches of that group's kind of had to come together quickly. You know, Bob in a new role, roughing in a new role, um, the new voice in that room. It's, you know, not just for the players, but just the staff. It's their, those guys being able to work well together is very, very key. And uh, I think they've done a great job up to this point. As a follow up to that, what would you say Bob Diaco's defining characteristic is? Um, yeah, I don't know if there's one. I mean, he's very, very passionate about the game. I mean, you can, you can see that. You can sense that from the way he approaches it. He's very, very detailed, um, and and he's smart. I mean, he gets it. He understands the game. He's he's been through a lot in his career. You know, he's he's worn a lot of different hats. So his experiences certainly help us right now. Barry Trammell. Yeah, Lincoln. Wild Saturday. Three top ten teams lose. Three others almost lost. Right. You guys are actually now back in the middle of the, maybe you probably never left it, but you're back in the middle of the playoff hunt. Is that one reason you made the change you did because you you felt that hey, this team can still achieve its highest goal and just need to instigate something to to, to facilitate that. Um, that was in my mind, but I. I don't know, had I not felt that way, would I have done it differently? I, I, that's a little hard to answer. Um, I, I certainly left the Texas game feeling like, you know, that we didn't play anywhere near our capability um, with, with a lot of disappointment for that. But I also left it feeling like this team can accomplish anything they want to. And so, yeah, I just, I think, a game like that really caused you to look back in the mirror and make sure, you know, hey, we've we've got what we need here. Let's make sure we're all doing our part and anything we need to adjust or tweak to to make sure this team plays at optimum level, we've got to be willing to do that. And so, uh, yeah, I've I've had a lot of confidence in this team, as you guys know, from from the off season on. And I I would say I'm that's done nothing but grow as the seasons went on. I mean, I, I think. You know, we're capable of a lot. We got a long ways to go to get there. You know, this week will be a big step here, but um, I don't think there's anything that this team can't accomplish. Cliff Brown. Yeah, Coach, a lot of times when there's a change in leadership at the top, player leadership also becomes important to help with that transition and smooth things up. Who have you seen on that defensive side that stepped forward and helped with the transition? Yeah, I think it's really, it honestly be a little tough to single people out because it's, it's one of those situations where, kind of like what I just said, you everybody's got to look in the mirror, you know, and everybody has to step up. And so, I mean, we've got our, you know, we know, you know, kind of who our defensive leaders are, the guys up front, you know, Kenneth Murray, you know, Bolton, uh, Trey Norwood, all those guys. I mean, we know who those guys are. But, I mean, this is, you know, this is one of those challenges that, that, Everybody gets challenged here. You know, everybody has a step up. It's not just the two guys that are team captains or the you know other three or four that are recognized as team leaders. I mean, everybody's got to be willing to you know look at it and say, what can I do better? And uh, so I, I saw a start of that last week, and that needs to continue. Kind of off Barry's question a little bit. This team has lost early season games and then rallied to find a playoff spot. I know you're taking things week to week, but is there something in the back of their players' heads that say, you know, this can be accomplished? That it has been before. Yeah, a lot of these guys were a part of that, you know. And it's two things. I mean, it's it's good to have the the confidence and the belief that you can, which I, we certainly have that. But I think also those guys, which is good for our players that haven't been here, can explain to them how how hard it was you know it's it's hard I mean it's it's regardless of what happened last week I mean going to Fort Worth and playing the Gary Patterson coach team it's hard to beat them there you know and then and we got plenty of other challenges on down the line after that so there's going to be a lot of challenges um there'll be a lot of, there'll be more adverse moments more things this team's going to have to go through but I do think that I know that the belief and confidence that we can get it done is there Karen Emig in the back right. Yeah, hey Lincoln, the, the last three years, a few times you guys did have a setback. People's attention almost automatically zeroed in on Baker. Um, 
what's he going to do? How's he going to especially respond? Uh, he, he had a really unique place on the team, I realize. And I'm, and I'm not suggesting Kyler needs to be Baker in response to what happened against Texas. But do you at the same time anticipate people being especially curious as to how he he responds at, at TC on Saturday? Um, I, they probably will just because they – he plays quarterback and he plays quarterback at Oklahoma. Um, you know, as far as response to adversity, I mean, I, I saw, you know, what I saw the second half of that Texas game in the fourth quarter in particular was a pretty good response too. So I think, uh, you know, he's, he's going to continue to grow. You know, he's still in so many ways young and, and inexperienced, you know, and is still learning and, it, but obviously doing so many things well too. So, you know, he's just got to, He's got to approach this just like he did the beginning of the season when everybody wanted to talk about replacing Baker and blah, blah, blah. He just, he was himself and he got better and better and uh, he needs to keep doing the same. If he does, then, you know, I, you know, I'm as confident in, you know, in his abilities and the way he's playing as, as any player in the country right now. On the other side, Joey. Well, obviously every year is different, but you guys haven't lost back to back games since you've been here. What's kind of been the constant in being able to bounce back and win those next games? Yeah, I think first it's it's belief. You know, even when you when something doesn't go your way, you've got to you got to have that that self belief, that inner belief, both individually and as a team, that you can bounce back. Um, I think it's you know everybody taking taking ownership in it. Um, you know, which I think has always been a big key. And then, um, and then I think too, it just comes down to the fight of your team. You know, it's, you know, when, you know, something doesn't go well, something negative happens, you know, just how bad do you want it? You know, how, how important is it to you, to this program, to, to get back on track and play the way that we know we're all capable of. So um, it takes a lot, it's challenging, but uh, it's, it's also one of the most, rewarding things and as a thing as a coach I don't know something I've always looked forward to you never want to have losses you don't want to have to deal with it much and we haven't had to but how your team responds from that says a lot about where you are as a program Barry? you know in mid-season like six five six seven games you don't see a lot of coordinator changes mm -hmm. when you see them in mid-season it's early season usually but it happened with you guys it also happened at Kansas this or last week have you, have you talked to your brother and compared notes on how how the transition goes and, and ways to make it better and those kinds of things? No, not I hadn't, I hadn't compared notes. Just checked in with each other. You know, we both know how difficult that thing is. So, um, no, it's it's different. It's not it's not by the book, and and uh, I I certainly get that part of it, but I I. I just felt like it was something that, you know, couldn't ignore at this point, you know, that it's, if it was the right time and the best thing for this team, I, then I didn't want to let any of the other factors, you know, keep me from it. And so, you know, it's, we know what this group's capable of and we know, you know, I, I told the guys in the locker room after the Texas game that we all had to look in the mirror. We all had to be willing to do whatever necessary to, to, to play the way we're capable of. And, that starts with me, you know, and if I'm not willing to do that, whether it's end of the season, mid-season, then, then I'm not doing my job. Jason Kersey. Coming in with a, with a change like this, is this an opportunity for a fresh start for, for maybe some guys who either maybe weren't connecting with Mike or, or who haven't been playing much? Oh, I, I don't know with the, with the change necessarily. I mean, we're always going to try to find the best players on the field. I mean, that's there's no doubt about that. I mean, you do – you know, you do, you've got some coaches in, in new positions, you know, who may evaluate guys um, a little bit differently, and that, that may be part of it. You've got some, you know, traditionally as well, you go into the second half of the season, a lot of times you may have, and we've had several throughout the years, maybe a guy that didn't play much or didn't play any of the first half that has developed and gotten better and better and gotten ready to go, and, and now he's ready to help this team. So that, in addition to having the bye week and a chance to rep some more of those guys, uh, does potentially give you those opportunities. Just as a quick follow-up, Buki had a tweet last week that got a lot of attention. I'm just curious if he's one of those guys that maybe needed a fresh start. No, I think last week was an emotional week, you know, and and – you know, he put something out there that as he th sat there and thought about it, decided he didn't want to do it. He took it down himself. I mean, that's – it was an emotional week. You know, if, if throughout that whole week all we get is one tweet like that, then we probably did pretty decent.
John Hoover. On the uh, Big 12 call this morning, uh, I was asking around about how Big 12 defenses have evolved, and, and uh, both Cliff and Gary offered up that uh, the people are playing defenses now that actually slow Big 12 offenses down. And I said, I, I wanted to, I was curious about that. I said, so how do you slow somebody down when they're the one snapping the ball and they're the one wanting to run tempo? And they both pointed to the way Matt Campbell dropped eight. You know, he, he illustrated perfectly against you guys last, last year here uh, and slowed you down. You're seeing possessions being limited now. Uh, you're seeing uh, plays coming down a little bit, number of plays in a game. How does, when you start preparing and you see uh, teams out there dropping eight, for instance, and they're, and they're running various kinds of zone defenses, how does that slow you down? When you want to go tempo and you get to the line of scrimmage and you look up and you say, wait a minute, we have to think this through. How does that work? Um, I don't know that it's slow, slowed us down a whole lot. I mean, honestly, I mean, you know, we scored 31 here last year and fumbled going in on the two yard line, you know, and didn't feel like we played very good. We played decent up there, you know, uh, a couple weeks back, you know, at Iowa State. So the, those guys have done a tremendous job defensively. I mean, that's, that's pretty clear. Everybody across the country can see that. I mean, the way they slow you down is they tackle. You know, I mean, they, they get people on the ground, you know, and they, for the most part, you know, don't give up a ton of big plays. And that's, I mean, that's always going to slow you down, whether you're dropping eight or rushing eight. If you get people on the ground, I mean, that's, that's going to happen. So, uh, you know, has there been some evolving of schemes um, offensively and defensively, you know, in the last couple of years? Are you seeing more of that? Are you seeing people attack it differently? Sure. But, I mean, that's... There's always trends, you know, and this one, you know, this is kind of the one that, that the league's in right now. You're seeing a lot of people do that, and obviously Iowa State probably right now does it better than anybody. Um, but I, is that I, – I don't, I don't want to take away the credit from the guys at Iowa State and say, well, just because they're dropping eight, that's slowing the game down. No, they're dropping eight because they're playing damn good defense. I mean, they, they, blitz, they blitz the other night, did obviously a great job against West Virginia. They – when they had pressures, the pressures hit. When they dropped eight, they got people on the ground. They're still able to get pressure rushing three, covered very well. I mean, they're they're playing really good, sound, fundamental defense, and that's you know that's why people are having a hard time moving it on them. Quick follow up for you, Gary said uh, he said that he'd never been a coach that liked to, to rush three linemen. He's always had four. This year, in the last couple of years, he's doing three. He's, he is dropping eight because of that evolution. Uh, does that affect the way you go about your business now, knowing that the guy you got coming up is is more leaning toward uh, a drop eight type defense? <laughs> um, I, you know me on those questions. I mean, I, I know Gary's evolved just like everybody has, and uh, you know he's one of the best defensive coordinators. You know, not just not just now, but. That there's that there's ever been certainly in this league, so you know would, wouldn't expect anything else from him. James Hale, you know, staying along the same lines, you know, they held Texas Tech to 17 even in the loss. What is it about what Gary Patterson and TCU does on defense, even with different personnel, that makes them so successful? Yeah, they got a you know a system that's been in place for so long, and and those you could tell the players know it inside and out. Um, He's done a great job, you could tell, of really zeroing in and recruiting the kind of guys that he wants on that defense. They've always, for a long time, I've thought, found, been able to project guys, guys that played other positions in high school, really project and, and done a great job developing players. Um, you know, and in the last couple of years, certainly since I've been back in the league, I mean, they've just, they've had some really good players. I mean, they've been really good up front, this year being no exception. They've had a lot of experience, a lot of really good players on the back end. Um, so, you know, you've got a really good coach that's, you know, a system that's been in place for a long time, players that believe in it, um, know every single adjustment, and then good players on top of it. You know, it's a pretty good recipe. Yeah, three-part question on that same subject. Did you watch TCU Tech live? Were you able to watch it just sort of for enjoyment rather than trying to figure out how to beat TCU. And three, did you enjoy that kind of game, which is sort of antithesis to what you're able to do with your offenses? Uh, yeah, I, I did watch it live. Uh, no, no, not for enjoyment. Um, uh, 
But yeah, could you appreciate the kind of game that it was? Sure. Um, just because not every game has to be, you know, 45 to 40, you know, and that's, uh, there was good quality ball played on both sides. I mean, both defenses played at a really high level. Um, you know, teams were really laying it on the line. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was fun to watch. I, I don't, you know, I'm not just partial to all these games being high scoring. I mean, I think you can tell when teams are playing at a high level, which especially those two defenses really were, and making things hard on both offenses. So uh, I certainly appreciate how competitive and well played it was. It was a, it was a field position game, mm -hmm. and as I was watching it, I got thinking, I hadn't thought of field position in years. <laughs> I mean, yeah. oh, you didn't care. OSU hadn't cared. They don't yeah. care where they get the ball as long as they get it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. It was. It was. Uh, it was almost old school in a way. So uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fun to watch. I, I guess I did. Maybe I lied. Maybe there was some enjoyment. Eric Bailey. Uh, Lincoln, in terms of recruiting, what do you tell your current commits and potential recruits about the coaching change on defense? How do you reassure them when the future really hasn't settled? Won't be settled until after the season ends. Yeah, we're just honest with them. You know, honest with them about you know why we made the decision. Um, you know how we'll handle it going forward. Um, and and I think they appreciate that. We've always you know been extremely open and honest with our recruits with their families i think that's a big part of it i know i talked about that a little bit last week and uh they get you know ou is one of the most stable places and this is one of the most stable situations that you'll find anywhere but this is also still a very unstable coaching world and and those changes happen from time to time whether it's a coordinator or whether it's a, a coach moving on to another place and uh so i think they trust how open we've been and and trust our judgment with it and and uh they've been um you know the response has been very positive tyler lincoln i was curious you mentioned the word stable uh how long do you think it truly takes to stabilize after the things that happened last week or have you gotten there and if you were how long did that take? Yeah, I'm counting on about two weeks. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know how you d define that term as far as kind of in this situation. I mean, you know, wouldn't have made the change if I didn't think we would have a chance to play well pretty quickly. Um, so those are certainly my expectations and our expectations. Everybody in there believes we can and will. Um, but also at the same time, are there some new things that we're going to have to work through, or is it a different staff set up? All that, yes. And uh, you know, we've got to fight like crazy to to work through all those kinks as fast as possible. And then our guys have got to respond the right way. And it just it takes buy-in. You know, it just it takes buy-in from the staff. It takes buy-in from each one of those defensive coaches working together, which they have. It takes buy-in from the players. Um, again, if that gap is so small and it's you know if we'll all buy in then we'll have a chance to play very well thank you everybody thanks, thanks.